waiting on here. Bob and I are back to finishing this watch party. Oh, what do you... Basically, watch party with commentary. Yeah, for Ant Man and Lost Quantumania. We are finishing from where we left off. More or where less. Hope. No, not Hope. Hope's mom. Janet. Janet was talking about how she knew uh, Kang. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit after where we're at right now. Right now we have uh, the flashback with Janet and Kang talking to each other. And uh, in the in the part one, we, at this point, we were talking about how young she looks at this point. Oh, yeah. Partly because time travels so differently. Just... Partly because uh, of uh, youthening on CGI. And um, I, love, I love that. Partly because it's Michelle, Michelle Bloody Pfeiffer. I, I love that. I love his. I love that thing right there. That the 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 hourglass looking thing. Yeah, the uh, yeah the power source kind of thing going. It looks cool, cool, and the fact that his whole throne is practical is um, is amazing. We haven't gotten to where things things uh, were last time, but I'm still working on getting the the audio to work correctly here no. on mine. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I don't know who King. So I don't know who King was. Until I saw, um, until I played the Lego Marvel Two video game, that's when I heard about King the Conqueror. Mm -hmm. And so originally, for that game, it was around the t it was around during the voice actors strike. Um, so they had to hire new bunch of actors, but originally Patrick Stewart was going to voice King the Conqueror in uh, Lego Marvel Two, the video game. You know who did it? Um, I can't well, actually I'd look the actor's name. Yeah, you you look it up here. I'm... Yeah, uh, yeah, but due to the it was but due to the voice actor strike because they felt like they weren't getting paid enough for doing voices, they uh, hired a bunch of new people who I've never even heard of. Yeah, Kang has actually been around in Marvel for quite a while. He was one of the. Uh, um, in under one of his other aliases, he was one of the Fantastic Four's first foes yeah uh king the conqueror first appeared in the avengers number eight in 1964 created by stanley and jack kirby yeah that's where alter he first appeared as king the conqueror alter ego nathaniel richards that's his true name yeah Fant first appeared yeah fantastic four number 19 yeah oh wait and he who remains, who uh, um, was a variant of his in Loki season one, is a completely different character. Actually, place of origins: Other Earth, thirty first century. Tim affiliations: Council of Kings, Cross Time Kings, partnerships: Ravana Renslayer and his adopted son Aura Boltigan. Notable aliases: I Iron Lad. Pharaoh Ramatut, Victor Timely, Scarlet Centurion, Victorix Prime, Immortus, Chrono Monitor number 616, Kane the Conglomerator, Quinn Griffin, aka Mr. Griffin. Yeah, there's all sorts of, there's each, uh, just about every king that is encountered, it's different from every other. It's a different individual from a different timeline. I see, and see, uh, the one thing I love about his suit they they stayed true to his suit from the oh, comics. Yeah. This is this is definitely a Kane the Conqueror suit. Though each uh, each Kane suit looks a little different. So he was voiced. Uh, so in Lego Marvel Superhero Two, he was voiced by Peter Serafinowicz, an English actor. The guy who I think we were just talking about uh, played the tick in the Amazon. Yep, I may be wrong. Yeah, yeah no, he he did. Yeah, in the Amazon series. So yep. So this is here's exactly where we left off right here. Uh, and yep. this is ja this Janet's big trick here. But I love how like I love like in the comics, Kang's face is always blue. I like how in like mm -hmm. this version. He goes from his normal face to the, when he uh, activates his helmet, it's all blue looking. Yeah, I don't know what the explanation is for the blue face in the. 
Oh, because so when he puts his helmet on, it's like a it's like a a, a barrier. Yeah. Over I don't know face. what it is in the comics, but here, it, yeah, that's what it is in this case. But in like the comics, it's always blue. But yeah, so they got Peter sent uh, that guy who played as a tick. Originally, it was supposed to be Patrick, Patrick Stewart. They still wanted someone to sound like Patrick Stewart, so they found uh, the guy who played as a tick. Mm -hmm. But here he is. He's taking his his habit of conquering into the um, quantum realm and. Hence the huge that huge city that looks like Coruscant. Oh yeah. So I actually about. uh after we finished part one, I actually uh left off to where we watched and I watched it on Disney Plus. I love oh. this. Like visually this movie's great. If I had to put it in the category of uh Marvel films, I put it in that category of Thor Love and Thunder. It's not good, it's not bad. It's like you 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 want you like you you want to watch it more than once though. Yeah, I want to watch it more than once. Yeah, so yeah, but Janet, uh, Janet expanding his power core like that, that was that is her big every you know, like I said the first time, all five of them have a great badass moment, and that was Janet's big one right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, need a little more volume on the on that one. Oh, you want me to raise the volume? Yeah, all right, sorry, better. I still think it's kind of gross how, how he has to control the ship. Yeah, it's interesting a little later on, though. Yeah. But yeah, that, that is just so cool. How his helmet basically does that to his face. Mm -hmm. His little force field. And the lines, you know, the scars on his face mm -hmm. kind of follow the lines that we usually see with King, too. And see, his like his eyes go back to different colors. So I think he wears contact lens. I don't know. I imagine it's yeah, all... I think it's probably CGI'd when it... When yeah. It, the, the eye but I love his I love the attention to detail to to his suit, and I will show a comparison of his original look to this version. Of his um you mean he who remains? Yeah. Yeah. Actually I'm gonna look at Kane's original look. Or some of the costumes that you know, it's a different costume each time. A uh, difference that I see with this um between, with this Kang, with the ones in the comics, is the all the bits that I've seen in the uh, all the pictures of him I can find online. He has this honking big gun about the size of his arm or bigger, mm -hmm. and this yeah. one has his arm armaments in his uh, in his gauntlets. Oh, it looks like in one of the iterations he's wearing uh, one of the earlier comics. It looks like he's wearing a mask, a blue mask. Yeah, one of the versions of him. Yeah, remember that King. It's a different. It's a different guy each time. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> one of him. But I like how this one is like faithful to one of his looks, where he's wearing the the blue and purple suit with the helmet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the parallels. One of the parallel worlds that Marvel's done that does not have a king, to my disappointment, is the Marvel Apes uh, universe. Really, and uh, that's where I'm. Uh, that's you know, that's what uh, the cosplay that I have, like, I'm barely a start on at all, uh, is uh, um, an ape version of King the Conqueror, hmm. mixed up with King, make mixed up with King Kong. It's kind of a mashup cosplay. Oh, little, uh, oh so, ba so ba oh, basically, 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 King Kong. Yeah, King Kong. <laughs> oh, As a King King Kang the Conqueror. Conqueror. I love it. And get a uh action get a wasp action figure and you know make like basically, a life size. Oh basically she she would be the the, the oh, fairy. Was... Nice. Yeah. I love the scar makeup they did for him too. Yeah, that it, it it makes the lines that we usually see on King's face in the comics. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like the Loki version. I mean, the, the Loki. He who remains? Yeah, I like his. I like his. He he doesn't seem necessarily evil. Yeah, that uh, he who remains was just kind of uh, a bit unhinged. And this one, Kang, and then 
the ones we see in the mid credit scenes are based on three other persona, three others of his personas. Mm -hmm. Interesting that he has uh, in this one he has gravity technology. There is in physics there is a relationship between gravity and time. All the other actors really like did a good job. I think the ones who kind of fell flat in my this is just my opinion. This is no disrespect to the actors, but I feel like Cassie and Modoc or Darren just I felt like they felt a little flat to me. Actually I thought Catherine did a fairly good job fairly good job here in this, especially with the her uh, big um her big moment a little later in the film. Oh yeah. Um I would have liked to have seen Abby Ryder forced and like I said before, that see Abby stay in the stay in the role or get the role back. Oh, the one from um the first two movies. Well, I know she, I know that that actress is still young, so they had to find someone who was a little But they didn't need to find somebody who was older because the time timeline is now caught up. Yeah. Um Abby is currently 15. I'm no. looking her up. And she has a movie out uh, soon or recently called Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Hmm. And when I look at uh, trailers and spots for, for that movie and then uh, look at... Um, um, and how old is Kat? And how old is okay? Yeah, honestly, looking at her, yeah, looking at her now, she could have done the role really well. As far as as far as uh, being believable at the age, oh yeah, she blew it up not as an exploding it as but as making it really huge. Yeah, there was the other one. Uh... No, not Catherine Newton. Who was the other one? The, who played uh, who played her in the in-game? Yeah. Emma Furman. Yeah, she's 21. I feel like looking at her now, I think she would have made a great return for Cassie, but I think they wanted, like, movies like, big movies like this, since in um, in-game she was just more of a side character. Yeah. They wanted someone who was, like, well-known. So they, and they, they, they the picked, reason they, they went picked... the reason they went with Catherine replaced Emma with Catherine was that uh, Catherine would be more able to do uh, the action scenes and stuff. Oh, oh yeah, plus but she's, she's twenty six. A... Yeah, she's like yeah, she's the oldest. I'm gonna actually see real quick here, and Emma is twenty one. Okay. Now this is one of the more interesting. Oh, so Cassie movies. is 16 years old during the movie's event since uh, she arrived uh, the Thanos snap. And this is probably a year later. Oh, she's 18. My bad. Yeah, 18. 18 in this one. So yeah, I mean it's not the first time they've casted an older actor actor to play somewhat young. I mean, look at uh, Tommy McGuire. He was like in his almost he was almost in his 30s and they had him play as a high school senior. Yeah, and Tom Holland, of course, has been um older than Peter Parker for a while. Now this is Oh yeah, I remember watching the scene. This scene tripped me the hell out when I watched it. This is yeah, this is the trippiest scene of the movie. Oh yeah. The special effects were the best. Yeah. yeah a couple of interesting points I want to make along the way though, too. <laughs> he doesn't answer to Darren anymore. <laughs> Don't die. Gee, thanks for the vote of confidence. Yeah. So... Yeah. Darren Cross never was the greatest planner. I mean, I just. I like how this scene kind of reminds... So you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Yeah, the first one, you mean? Uh, uh, no, the third one. The scene where Jack Sparrow is on the uh, is on the Black Pearl and there's a bunch of other Jack Sparrow clones. Oh, I don't remember that. This is what it kind of reminds me of. Like, basically, they hired... So, you know, I basically like how it's like basically stunt actors 
that are supposed to look like uh yeah You know, so what he's saying is they don't have the real one is the one with the calm mm -hmm. and nobody else figures it out. <laughs> oh, God, it's like that scene from uh, Enter the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Across the Spider -Verse. <laughs> See, this is this is one of this is one thing in this bit that doesn't scan for me. It just doesn't make sense. Oh, the, his Baskin Robbins. What? Yeah. Robinson. Why is he in? <laughs> Did you hear that? Do you have ice cream? Why is the why is he dressed like Baskin Robbins in the I'm quantum guessing, realm? I'm How guessing that it... I'm guessing that's a probability. Yeah, I'm that guessing a really I'm small guessing, probability. I'm, I'm guessing... there's only one, but I, I I just don't get how what the story would be and why he suddenly is in the Baskin Robbins. I, I I don't know. I I wish I knew that answer. Yeah, that that that's one thing that just doesn't scan for me here. But that's really the only big plot hole. You know, the closest thing to a big plot hole, I should say. Endless possibilities. Oh, God, the green screen. Oh, that's disturbing. Whoops. Such a really good scene. Yeah, this part here, I think the other Scots have all figured out that this one's the one that needs to make it. And so they're all working together on it. To save their daughter? Yeah. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> It's a having the Baskin Robbins uh, um, Scott there is a, it's a it's a good joke. Oh yeah, it is a good joke. It just doesn't doesn't make sense for me. <laughs> oh bless you. No, it was a yawn. I have the uh, the subtitles on here, and it just now it said falling Scott's scream. You hear the screaming of all the Scots in there. Okay, here he goes. Yeah, he's got it there. Oh, the CGI faces, the eyes, the CGI faces with the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it bugs the crap out of me. I don't know whether those are all possibilities of of uh, shrink discs or bunch of shrink discs that she's put in but either way it's working oh yeah i can't imagine how long it took to make his his armor like that oh let's see I figure they probably made three or four of them is i would want to i would want to research it to find out if to, to find out even make a guess you know, get an army of people to do it in a couple of days and then uh um Come, uh, come, Rose City Comic Con. We'll probably find somebody there who um, made it in an afternoon. Aaron, you look like shit. Yeah, this is Jonathan. One of Jonathan Majors is scariest, or not the scariest scene of his in this film. Yeah, just full of quiet menace. Yeah. You know, I have a feeling that they made a life size like armor for uh they made a life size armor for Modoc. Like they may have like the real like life size version of it. And of course they have like the CGI version. Cause I know sometimes in like a behind the scenes they'll like show people like a life size or a small version model of like the suit. It'd be interesting to see, you know, the making of when uh, when that dropped here on the on the channel. 
Oh, yeah. That shot right right there, previous to the establishment shot, that's what made me reminded me about the ants that fell in. They were completely out of my mind up to that after that point. It reminds me a little bit of uh um of the uh Doctor Strange being escorted by Ultron in Mad Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. I don't think he actually started the war. No, I think what I think one of his ver one of his versions did. I think several of his other variants did another uh, independently of each other. Still, such a good movie. Yeah, this is this is this is one of Marvel's uh, uh, better best efforts. And I do love their suits. I'm not sure if those are LEDs inside the suits or that CGI light up. I'll add up those um probably a little of each. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what do I do? Yeah, I'll say. She's doing a jailbreak. That's what you're doing. You're doing a jailbreak, Cassie. Yeah, flashing back to these two. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying in the part one this this had a this there's this uh, significant part for this. Yep. That's impressive. And when they were in the ant farm, they were already building machines. Oh yeah. I mean ants are smart. Yeah. <laughs> Repairing a ship. <laughs> 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 and you know it's that kind of that sense of validation he has from right. that so this actress right here i know we talked about her in the last time mm -hmm. she was she played as that imperial officer from mandalorian after this is i have I, I think honestly this is like her first big major role aside from a, yeah an emotion picture aside from mandalorian as far as i know i'll have to look her up and see, but this could be her first major role. I'm over here looking it up. Katie O'Brien. Um, it's the biggest role she's had so far. Um, I indicated as far as in the, um, as far as in movies, she was in the film called Sweet Girl in uh, 21. I, yeah, just a TV host. So basically, this is like her first major role. Yeah. Hmm. Good to know. I mean, even if it's just as a, like a side character. Well, the, um, she's uh. Gentara is written as a uh, uh, tertiary character, but the way Katie plays it is kind of, it almost has become secondary character. I'm actually going to look her up myself. Yeah, here is Kang's army. I can honestly see Katie O'Brien in some more and more projects later down the road. Oh, she was also uh, she also played as uh, Kimball in Agents of Shield. Oh, and she was uh, Major mm -hmm. Sarah Gray in Black Lightning, the TV show. Yeah, and in The Walking yeah, Dead. Yeah, this is what I was watching. It that is the role that I was trying to, to place her with. But this is for me Cassie's big, um, um, badass moment. Her oh, yeah. big speech here. I think my favorite big ass mo badass moment for uh, for. Uh, for Janet was uh, probably saving uh, Scott later on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love this. I'll drive. He's got his mind wrapped around it now. That's his badass moment of <laughs> that's kind ends. of his. No, he has not. That's not Hank's big badass moment. Oh that's, no. Oh, I know. I know, I know Hank's big badass moments. Come yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> it rocks. That was uh, in part one. We were discussing uh, the possibility of. Um, 
uh, Marvel doing a mini series centered on the quantum quantum realm. Just I would I, I would like to, I would like to see uh, a series based on the quantum realm. Yeah, I would love it too, and I think uh, Katie O'Brien would probably be like the uh, top billing star. Oh yeah, it's go. It's so scary how Paul Paul Rudd barely ages. Oh yeah, he's he's what now eighty nine. <laughs> so I don't know, but he does not. He's like I think fifty or forty or something. But like looking it up, he's fifty four. He don't look fifty four. No, he looks like he's in. He looks like he's in his thirties. Thirties, forties, yeah, late thirties, early forties. Yeah. So this is pretty b badass, though. This scene right here. I could tell from earlier. I, I it probably it may have been deliberate. King is not a great public speaker. No, but it didn't no. have to be because he was talking to robots. Yeah. This is my favorite moment for Scott. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Janet... my second favorite. That is so badass. That oh, entrance. Yeah. The directing and cinematography just in that this little sequence right here is top notch. It was shit. The most common used, the most common used curse word aside from the aside from the aside from you know. The quantum knots, they are called. This scene right here is probably my all-time favorite. Like the what's well, coming up though soon. Well, right here is I half expect him to be hanging onto the top of a tower, but you know that's just me. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, this. Is I mean, nothing of... nothing beats the scene from the final scene from Endgame, but this is this is still up there. You're talking about uh, uh, the whole battle scene in Endgame? Yeah, outside yeah. of the Avengers building, yeah. <laughs> what did he say? Revolution. Yeah, Revolution, yeah. Revolution! <laughs> Same guy played Kurt in the first two Ant-Man films. And yep. Apparently he's a real character. He they did... Uh, um, when they uh, when they did what if uh, the zombies episode, he was really leaning into the Baba Yaga gag, mm. which may have been the whole reason they included him in that. Oh, and I love this scene right here too. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> this is almost as that is almost as good as uh, Fezzik rip his arms off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's disturbing. Yeah, I get the feeling Zeb didn't know either. Oh, I'm sure he didn't. Zeb. Nice transition from, you know, nice showing one bit of action with another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another great moment for Scott, but of course, you know, he should have a lot of them. He's the lead. Oh, yeah. You can notice here that uh, Phase 4 and 5, they're leaning really, in, really leaning into the uh, Young Avengers cast. Oh, yeah. We had young. Um... Oh, I've always forgot. Um, I remember there was an actual a TV show about Young Avengers on Di on Disney a few years back. Ooh, you know what I noticed when Cassie punched him? He already had like the scars on his face, like before before she even hit him. You're not the Hulk, Cassie. <laughs> You need Modoc. Yeah, yeah, Modoc. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Good line, but it's kind of a weak scene. It just uh, just some of Cassie's scenes when, when she's like, you know, Ant Girl. Just don't do it for me. Yay! It's really um. In the comics, Cassie's uh, code name at this when she was at this level was Stature. Hmm. We have Wicked and Speed, the Roman, the uh, Maximoff twins hmm. in the MCU. But some of Cassie's, and I'm not, and I, so that's not on Cat. That's not the actor's fault. Yeah, that yeah, that scene wasn't the actress's fault. So she did great. We have, uh, let's see. 
Uh, and this is this is a and this is a great conversation too. Mm. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> First, I'd heard about the citrus part, angle of it. Yeah, there's the difference between uh, Kang and Hank. Oh yeah, is the uh, Kang people are ants, the Hank. Answer people. Right. <laughs> Overload. Yeah, the special effect is why I wish he'd not gotten his head blown up. Pull back! Pull back! Run away, run away. Jeez, dude. And see the and the see if you look at King's face, he's got the white eyes too. Yeah. Just like came from like the original comics. Such a great shot. This it's is done. also the that shot of all three of them was also the thumbnail I used from the last episode, which I'm probably gonna use yeah, for so... this one. And this bit with the three of them fighting him, oh, yeah. taking turns around Robin here. But yeah, see, I like how he shows the white eyes too on occasion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they get up and come back, and so we don't get just the two. Uh, uh. I mean, that is also a callback to the comics when he did defeat the Avengers. Hmm. And here it comes. <laughs> I love this scene. It kind of reminds me of that scene from um, Lord of the uh, Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers, where Gandalf comes and they're just like they're coming down the hill. It may have been a deliberate uh, homage to that at, at, at some level, but it, it really is my favorite scene in the whole film. Oh yeah, no, I love this scene. And there are a lot of really good ones for it to for it to I be can better look than, past so. I can look past some of the cheesy one liner shit, but like this is perfect. Yeah, this you know this is a nice no liner moment. Although I could have really have uh, I really could have lived with uh, hearing Michael Douglas say hello to my little friends. <laughs> yeah, that would have been too easy. Yeah. <laughs> But the line that he does say at the end of this is uh, pretty good, too. Hmm. You hear the answer all in, pulling everything apart. Raymond and Rick, I am not a dick! Which for me, that's the dumbest line of the movie. Just, exactly. Yeah, it's, it was it was meant to be something fun, but uh, it, it, it kind yeah, of no. backfired. It could have been something better. Yeah, it could have been better. Now love this. <laughs> no fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh this right here, this whole entire scene is the weakest line ever. It's just the weak point of this movie. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, the, I think the dialogue could have been written better, but the scene they're, itself. They're, they're, they're turning, they're, they try to make it sad, but they're adding like comedic stuff to it, which does not work. <clears throat> You. Yeah, that's that's um that is something that uh, uh, is going to be... uh, 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 uh. that would have made it totally work if they determined that he had just lost consciousness and then survived. But then, what do you do to the character? This is just like you're trying to you're turning. So uh, the tragedy speak... and comedy doesn't work at this. At this no, level. speaking of um, like scenes like this, it turns out in uh, The Witcher, the TV, the TV show on Netflix season two, when uh, Geralt's horse Roach dies, the writer 
originally wanted Roach's death to be like comedic and lighthearted. But Henry Calville, being someone who knows the source material, told him, no, rewrite this and make it sad. And I can't take this death seriously. Yeah, this, although the saying, yeah, you're an Avenger there, because, yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, Why not? You're you're, an honorary Avenger. Tell him that. And they they just leave his dead body there, too. Uh, Well, what else are you going to do with it? Just, just. Toss it over the bridge the or something. Moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like uh, the uh, the character that Katie O'Brien's playing. I do love her outfit, though. Oh yeah, um, Zentora. The outfit, well, everything about that character. I mean, she just really makes it so intense. I. I uh, I want the series. I want to see the series centered around the character, even oh. though the character was made up for this. Uh, oh yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's not yeah, not a comic book character. I looked at almost up, not... yeah, almost everybody in, that we meet down there, other than Kang and Krylar, are just made up for this. Oh, movie. the character that Bill Murray plays. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, in the comics, he's a um, galact as a galactic assassin. Mm. Not so fast. <clears throat> this for me is uh, Scott's best scene. Oh yeah, Scott basically taken on a god. King's armor is pretty much wasted, so it's like that. Uh, Scott's been exerting himself physically for all this time, <laughs> and King's mostly just been running around using his weapons. Oh, he's basically using. He's basically using power armor. Without his armor, yeah. he's he's nothing. I mean, he's still strong as fuck, but you know. That yeah, was King's not, pretty buff. Not I to mean, mention, I, not I to think mention, Jonathan Majors worked out for this movie. Oh yeah, no, he did. Not to mention he was in um, he was in the Apollo movie. Uh, the the rock, just before the, this, yeah, Is yeah, the, the rock, Creed yeah, the Rocky three. spinoff, Creed. Thank you. Yeah, the Creed, the uh, Rocky spinoff movie. I'm kind of hoping Jonathan... You know who I'd also like to see Jonathan Majors play as, in my opinion? Who? Uh, John Stewart from... um, for uh, The Green Lantern, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. If he ever switches to DC, I can see him play as as, uh, John Stewart Green Lantern. He's got the acting chops for it. In my opinion. He does for the for John Stewart, yeah. I mean, despite the controversy uh for Jonathan Majors and what he's done, you know. Yeah, get uh yeah, try and work around that. But yeah, and like in, in my personal opinion, I honestly think Jonathan Majors could make a excellent John Stewart Green Lantern. Alternately, I could see yeah, that is a, a line from the trailer that uh could have been tweaked, but it's still a good line. I can see Jonathan be as the monitor also. Yeah. Such a just the death though. Or apparent death. I think he may have just kind of gone to the quantum drum quantum realm. Mm-hmm. Though he won't be coming back anytime soon. Mm-mm. Possibly in the Kang Dynasty. Nah. So is this would this be Marvel's phase four or phase five? I'm confused. Uh this is early phase five. So Shang then Shang Chi was phase four. Um well no, because Shang Chi is post uh in game. Well, the phase four is fa- is post in game. Okay. Let's see. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, phase four ended with Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Okay. Phase, this is the first one of first film of Phase Five, and that will continue on with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Three, oh, Marvel's volume th- three. So, Mar- uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw that in theaters. It is the third. I too. It, it is the third Marvel movie to make me both happy and sad cry. Endgame 
Wakanda Forever, and then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. But for anyone who knows why it made me cry, like, if you know, you know. If you don't, you gotta watch it. Yeah, there's no no sense in spoiling it, and spoiling it would just spoil it. As far as Guardians. Yeah. Here's the little victory party here. Well, they just like they're they're free, you know. Yeah. But like victory party wise, my favorite victory uh bash party is from uh Return of the Jedi special feature, uh the uh special edition where all the planets are celebrating. That is still today my favorite celebration scene. Yeah. But yeah, it's like the, his his his, his makeup and wounds and everything. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But you know what? Who said that doesn't make any sense? <laughs> <laughs> and you can still see the scars healing. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Twelve. <laughs> I don't know why this guy thought he was Spider Man. So. Happy birthday, Cassie. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. He left off the R. Oh, I would... oh God. Yeah. I like how he's just questioning about Kane, though. So I heard I, a friend of mine was telling me a theory about this scene, how apparently King has something to do. So how King has something to do with this. With uh, his thing coming back. Yeah. He did make mention of other versions of him. So yeah. now this is the only this is the only time I've ever seen Paul Rudd look his age. Oh yeah, it's probably because of the lighting. Yeah, the, it's probably on purpose. And he's not smiling. Now, when you uh, when you went through and finished this, did you see the mid post credit scenes? Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, um, Owen, oh, hope changed your hair again. I'll probably still go show the both the scenes because I, I want to talk about those. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> yeah the earlier thing where he was walking down the street i would i think probably they did that by having him record the, the audio first oh yeah adr yeah there's a tut uh, tut raw uh, here's there's a rama tut version that there's the immortus version and the fact that again jonathan majors was playing all versions and i love those contact lenses yeah I don't, uh, I think he overdid, I thought he overdid the portrayals of these three. I forget what they called that high tech one there out of the three. I can't remember. I love this scene. Yeah, just is seeing a bunch of them here. And bunches and bunches of Kang costumes. I mean, it's like... And there's like an alien-looking one. Yeah, a lizard-looking one. There's, and and there's the there. alien one. And that kind of uh, um, helps me feel better about my... Uh, oh, there's this, yeah. Oh, yeah. My, uh, King Victor King Timely. Conqueror, and this is which is another... Anomaly machine. So this will be another version the of very final scene right there. You see the terror on his face, and that right. is just that is one of uh, um, Tom Hiddleston's best acting moments without line. Just that one little scene, that oh, one yeah. little shot. Oh yeah, no that that movie. I gotta say, nope. Oh. Well, that sucks. Knock something over? No. 
um, I leaned too far on one of my handles on my chair. <laughs> so everyone is hearing that crunching noise. That's it was my, audible. That mm-hmm. was my armchair basically just snapped. So I can't lean over this way. But good movie on it. I mean, if I had to rate this movie, so I'll ask you, Bob, because I know you, we usually do this. And what was it? What was it worth making and everything? Was this movie worth making? And what would you rate this movie? I absolutely. I would grade it like an A minus to an A. Uh, the only down parts, the only real parts I'm really down on are uh, how Modoc was handled and uh, um, that one thing with the Baskin Robbins version of Scott. Oh God, that the the, the uh, possible the uh, the <laughs> oh God. Yeah, those are the only two things that I would that I would say um, no. Those something should have been done with, differently with that, but. Um, and as far as with Modoc, um, I think just a, a better dialogue overall would have been better. Um, I'd have to go and watch the first Ant Man movie to see what uh, Darren Cross's dialogue was like in that one. Oh no, that his dialogue is much better. But again, he's a main villain in that one. Yeah, in that one. So um, that so Modoc really needed to be to be refought and reworked out. Um, but other than that, this is like a, a really a one of the top notch movies of Marvel. And I, it's a very nice opening for Phase Five. Oh yeah, I well, I'll give this a B, and it was sort of worth making. Like, there were some good parts, there were some bad parts. Some there were a lot of cheesy. Like, I loved all the scenes with Hope, Janet, Hank, and Scott. Cassie, some of Cassie's lines, again, not no disrespect to the actor. I feel like some of her lines could have been slightly better. Well, the conversation with Modoc at but, the Darren at the end there, yeah. But also, you know, this is like, I think a second or third time that this actress has been in a, a feature-length film before that. She was in the uh, horror adaptation of Freaky Friday. Yeah, so let me go look her up here. But yeah, Catherine, uh, um, I thought the 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 big speech that she made. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's perfect. That was yeah, that was pretty much dead on. Her her um, crying her crying scenes just didn't do it for me. I just it it didn't seem like a convincing. Yeah. So sim- significant things that Catherine was in. I saw. See, I'm looking at her uh, um, Wikipedia page over on my far monitor, and there's Paranormal Activity for uh, the Martial Arts Kid, Lady Bird. Um, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I think that was nominated. Hmm. So Oscar. she's been in some. So she's been in some decent stuff. Yeah, Detective Pikachu, which I still haven't seen. I want to. Oh, and yeah, I, I still need. I still need to watch that. Well, I think that should do it. Yeah, um, and she's coming up with Lisa Frankenstein. Oh God, <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, well, so, well, yeah, I horror think... comedy film. Yeah. You know. Oh, that's just really freaky then. Anyway, I think that should do it. Expect to eventually see more of these later down the road. Uh, these watch parties are mainly to be done for newer films. Because I feel, because I feel like I don't know, doing older films. The older films are more, or are more so uh, what we would do for was it worth making? Um, this one, uh, this one, and what are your thoughts are for more newer stuff? So. Yeah. Um, with that being said, also real quick, as I always mention, Bob, where can people find you on social media if they want to give you a follow? Uh, okay, get the uh, get my link tree in the description. It will, and uh, from there you can go to uh, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Twitter, various other places at Bob Greenway. Nice. Okay, I'm just taking this one off. <laughs> I just. No longer have arm armrest because this was going to eventually fall off. So yeah, yeah. So Anyone? Uh, this is one to cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm Wayne the Unknown. Until next time, thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for watching.